All right, guys, today's video, <laughs> we're going to show you how we button up these slats, get them all finished, show you how we got them straight, true, no body work, lightweight, no seam on the inside, three pounds total. Let's get these wings underway, back to work. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. All right, guys, let me tell you about this machine we're about to fire up. So this is a water jet. It puts out 60,000 PSI of water pressure. So the only way to do that is to put it inside a ram that pressurizes into a small volumetric chamber. It's called an amplifier. So we get 60,000 PSI. The velocity is so fast and so piercing, it'll cut through anything. It can literally cut through seven inches of any hard material. I have always been fascinated by water jets. This right here is called Garnet, and it's just a fine, fine powder. And so what we do is we pressurize the water, send it through a line, and then it has to come out a nozzle. So most nozzles are actually a diamond tip so that the water going through it doesn't just eat the diamond away. And you actually have to use soft water or just the minerals of the hard water will eat the diamond. That's the force and velocity going through this machine. So after it goes through, gains the velocity, the garnet is added right at the end, goes through a tip just like this of the two combined. This tip is a pressed powder metal that is so hard that if I were to drop it, even though it's a quarter inch diameter, it would just shatter into a dust. And we're gonna take this machine that can cut seven inch plate steel and we're gonna push it all the way to its max and we're gonna cut pink house insulation foam. Ooh wee. So we can make a part for Scrappy. <laughs> I want a zero draft part. A draft is when you make a mold where you taper the edge to help get the part off. And sometimes if you make a mold, this right here is a female mold and it has no draft. So the lines go clear through, which is why you can see all the way through this and it doesn't have a bottom in it. I have to be able to get to the backside to hit it out because there's no draft, it has to be tapped out. The reason I want a zero draft internal rib for my slat is I want absolute precision as I'm stacking and want really tight fit for the leading edge as it moves. So I, I can't have any variance where the slat has any flex at all. This right here is the water jet foam parts. And uh, I'll show you a close up here in a second, but right here, you can see that fit. That is a zero tolerance fit. There's literally not room to put a single piece of paper through there. What that's gonna allow me to do is first wrap this in carbon fiber. And then when I go to put it in here, it actually has to compress the foam to go down into the mold. What that does is it will push all the resin into the foam and strip it out of the carbon. So it's like doing a vacuum bag part, but it'll actually pull more pressure or put more pressure on the carbon then I can get out of a vacuum. This will make a really lightweight part because when I wrap it in carbon and press it in here, it's gonna go really tight. Now I've done it. You see if I push this all the way down, that's on the bottom. I left it a quarter inch high on purpose because I want pressure to be able to push the carbon to the bottom. So as I put these parts in, I will then place plates on them. I got two a piece all the way down. And then if you look right here, this plate is a machined plate I have because it's perfectly true. It's all been machined flat. I'll lift it up and set it on top of this part that will be on there. So um, that will give me that plate right there. I have two of them. They're 350 pounds a piece. So I can make a compression fit to push that all the way down to the bottom. So this was a lot of fun. We machined this last night. It literally finished at four o'clock this, this morning. Um, these we ran yesterday, so it's time to start making parts. We got a lot of work to do. I got about 80 of these to make, so two, four, six, eight at a time. I need 10 sets. Let's get to work. All right, guys, I hope you can hear me over the vacuum pump. We got a slap being vacuumed right there. I'm trying my first part, so I've just got pink foam. I stacked it so I could run the carbon fiber long and just push it over the part. 
All I need to do is just make sure I don't have any big, any wrinkles in it anywhere. Now the idea here is to take this tail, fold it back on itself, and then see if I can get this to fit in this mold. So wish me luck. Oh, that is gonna work so good. Back to work. I feel like I'm a grape lady. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> All right, guys, got the last one done. But this is a good place where you can kind of see the, the pink foam. I did it an inch and a half, but I made my mold at an inch and a quarter. But the final part is actually an inch. Those steps are for a reason. It's so that when I put a plate on it, it actually will put pressure on the foam and the foam will squish and it does the plate won't touch this. It will put all the pressure directly on the foam only. The reason why the mold is an inch and a quarter deep when I only need a one inch wide part is I wanna make sure that if I push it in as it went, you can see this side went a little long, this side went a little short but I know that as long as that's sticking out, when I go to trim it, I'm trimming a quarter inch below it. So I make quarter inch steps and I ensure that I'll have a perfect part. All of the plates underneath are evening up. I'll put even pressure. I've got one more plate I can stack on it, put it over 700 pounds. We'll leave this for the night, pull it apart tomorrow. 24 hours later. Look at that. <laughs> awesome. Well, now the trick is, how hard are they gonna be to get out? <laughs> All right, guys, so the idea, we'll see how this works, has zero draft, so it's gonna be tough to come out. It's gonna have to come out perfectly flat, so I'll have to kind of work my way back and forth. And then these little carbon loops I made are so that I can hit down right on those edges through here and drag this fine point out the other side. So. Um, the actual carbon fiber carries right through where it looks like there's metal here. I just left a little thin trace to connect these two sides together, but hopefully <laughs> it comes out, which is luck. I'll do the next batch different because when I overlap this side, if you come look around this edge, the messy side, I meant to go through and cut with a pair of scissors the carbon and make sure they didn't touch each other. So not only do I now need to pop the pieces out of a zero tapered um, mold, but I gotta pop them all out at the same time. It was at this moment that he knew. Rather than one at a time, so I gotta work my way down and back. I'll get it, just give me a couple minutes. A little longer than a few minutes later. So now what I'm gonna do, I've gently tapped these all out. The depth I want, I'm gonna just go through and quickly check them with the calipers tap them exactly to the depth I want. So once I get it all set so all the depths are just perfect, I'll just take the multi-tool and just rip the backside off. And that way every one of them are cut perfect to a caliber set depth. And uh, I won't have to do any work trying to tape it and cut a straight line. So I'll cut all these off at once, then pop them the rest of the way out. Back to work. And we're out. So let's no knock the rest of these out and show you how we get the pink foam out. Back to work. Um, I wanna show you how we get the pink foam out. Now, um, I can chip out the foam, which is what I'll actually do, and there's still a residue left over. But this is what I'll do, is I'll kind of quickly break out the foam, but I don't want that leftover foam left inside there. But just for fun, I'm gonna leave all the pink foam in and show you what it does, dunking it in pure acetone. It looks like my bucket's a little low. So this is just acetone. Now acetone, if you were to leave this in your carbon fiber in it overnight, you would actually soften it. 
But acetone, if you just use it for 15 minutes, is gonna have no effect. Clean it off and dry it, you won't affect it at all. You literally have to bathe it in acetone and forget about it for a night or a day to do any damage to it. So acetone's a great tool. But let me show you how this works. Uh, shoot, I'm gonna get some more acetone. We'll get back at it, give me a sec. All right, I'm gonna try anyway. I don't have any more acetone, so we gotta go to the store, but I'll try and dunk these two. I prefer it to be a lot deeper, but watch how this works. It's just gonna float for now. All right, so I've just let this sit for about a minute is all. If you look inside, I can literally push. This looks like kind of a black tar almost out. And this is the pink foam. So you wanna make sure you get this all out. Now, I've actually done parts where I've closed an entire carbon fart part and have pink foam cut a, did I say fart? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. So I've done par parts where the pink foam was the entire shape of something I needed. I wrapped the whole thing, but I wanted to keep it fully intact. So what I did is I drilled a hole in one end, filled it up with acetone, then put my hand on it and shook it up. And then I'd pour out this black residue left over. And sometimes it'd take two or three tries and then get a little... Uh, mini camera and look in there and make sure you've got it all out. But it's a great way to make a sealed, complete encased part. But I'm gonna go through and clean these up. But I wanna show you the difference on this one. I just barely dunked it, rub my finger around the edge and I can actually feel, you can see that there's no <laughs> alien tar left in here. We got a, about an hour of cleaning to do. You guys know the drill, let's get back to work. Okay guys, so I've got my leading edge slat propped open. This little edge will get cut off later. I've got these all cleaned, sanded, prepped, and basted with resin for the carbon fiber. What's really great about a zero tolerance fit with these parts is that when I get this in there, I don't need much micro, little bead like that all the way around. I can slide it in. Give or take a quarter inch, which will bug me, but... I'm familiar with the bubble, Morty. I also dabble in precision. What's really cool is I don't need any Clicos, I don't need any preset holes, which means I won't need any body work on the other side. I won't have any holes to fill. All right, I've got these all set in. They're ready to go now. As soon as I pull this, the two by fours out, this is gonna clamshell up. And I've, I've squared these up, but if I was even off just a little bit, because of how tight the tolerance is from the inside part and the outside part, as soon as I start to close it and push, if they're off, you can actually watch them straighten back up because they have big square edges, square sides. I've got the middle end, it's bonded, but the bead coming down this back edge, I want to be about a little better than 3 eighths of an inch of material. So what I'm actually done is I've just put two paint sticks, which is a quarter inch, but I'm gonna squeeze it in and make sure it touches both sides of the gap that I've got down here where the ends meet. But I'll squeeze it in, it'll touch the quarter and I'll go a little bit longer and I can watch it run um, a little bit further back and keep my eye on it as I back up down this line because it's held apart. As soon as I push down, this micro is gonna bleed back about an inch as it goes out as the part gets wider. And that inch makes that back edge super strong. So when you grab it, you cannot flex it. It keeps it perfectly straight and temperature changes and you don't get a wavy trailing edge. This is the edge we cut off right here. What I wanna show you is how strong that bonded joint is. And you would think it would pop if you put loads on it. Look at this twist. Holy crap, how far are you gonna come? That's like two full turns. <laughs> there you go. You right here, a little bit of a crack. So I've got two to two and a half full rotations out of that carbon fiber with a complete return to original shape just out of a scrap piece. But things that are rigid break. You know, there's, there's a lot to be said for people being flexible in their life and in their relationships and in their business and certainly structurally Stuff that's built too rigid and can't flex will crack. I suppose it's good advice. And carbon I, fiber and micro? I, that's has some flex. 
You can see it kind of squish out as I come down. And now that I've got that set, I'm gonna slide it to my reveal edge. All right, now we're gonna clamp it down, starting with the ends. That's why I ran the steel long. And then we'll clamp the front. Back to work. All right, guys, this is dried up from yesterday. <laughs> so light. Garbage fiber is amazing. Wow. Okay guys, that's it. Cut the length, crazy lightweight. The edge line, if you look down it, that's as straight as it gets. I don't even know if the camera is gonna be able to see it. But let me show you something. This is the test. I'll get a lot more strength when I put the end caps on it, but this should be strong enough. It's supposed to hold 50 pounds. <laughs> Absolutely unbelievable how strong carbon fiber is. Okay guys, super excited. This is the moment of truth. I've got a right and a left side. These are different. So the way this is gonna work, I'll go ahead and bond this, slide it in perfectly flush, and then this is designed to make sure that I don't lose my zero tolerance part. I, I really wanted this to be perfect because this part slides into a machine billet part on my slat. And so this is so that when there's glue in here, this compresses this to its original shape. This is my window I put in. So I could see that it was all the way up tight. You can see the tolerance right there. And then this one will go on this side, glued in, this goes on. And then the part is perfectly true, straight, bonded, and compressed so that I have a machined end finish on both ends. So, <laughs> part one will be done in a few minutes and a million more to go. You can see these two lined up, getting ready to bond those ribs in. Back to work. Okay guys, what I'm doing now is I've just got to put a hole, and it, technically I only need one, but I'm gonna put two just to have an extra uh, air outlet. But what we don't want to do, and this is the lowest point on this slat, is we don't want this slat to pop as I go up to 25,000 feet. So right at this lowest point, I'm just putting in a small hole for this to vent. I'm gonna do one on the other side as well. So what happens is you go up in altitude, the air gets thinner, so whatever air is in here will expand and this will actually blow up like a balloon. So when I put the ribs inside this slat, all the ribs, I drilled a big quarter inch hole right in the middle of it. So it wasn't anywhere near where I had glue to bond the part together. So right in the middle is a great big hole through every rib all the way down. But at these ends, I just want an eighth, an eighth inch hole instead of a quarter inch hole right at the two lowest points and as this sits on the airplane like this, the lowest point in case somehow water got in it, which is very unlikely, but if it did, it could drain out, but mostly it's just to vent it. So here's one, ready for some clear. You guys know the drill, that's work. All right, that's the last one, ready to go. Guys, I'm so pumped. We're about ready to get going on the wings. I gotta finish up some tables I just started on using some of the spare spars from Scrappy's big primary spar to make the wing tables. So we'll get some wing tables bumped up, start putting the wing together. I'm so pumped. Thanks for following along. We'll see you next time. Back to work.